What are modern, fast-growing companies doing to attract and hire top talent? How can your company utilize cutting-edge techniques and technology to drive long-term, repeatable results? Welcome to the Growth Recruiting Podcast, where we answer these questions and many more through conversations with top CEOs, leaders in talent acquisition, and pioneers in HR. Here's your host, Josh Tolan. Today, I am joined by Jen Paxton, the Director of Talent at Level Up, which is building next-generation digital experiences for over 200 brands nationwide, empowering businesses to engage customers, grow sales, and build a long-term, scalable digital strategy. Level Up was ranked the number one best place to work by the Boston Business Journal and named one of the top 10 Boston Globe best places to work in 2017. Jen joins the podcast with an amazing track record in HR and talent acquisition at some of the fastest growing companies in the Boston area. And I'm excited to chat with her today about the strategies and initiatives that she's been a big part of. So Jen, welcome to the show. How's it going today? Good, good. Thanks so much for having me. For sure. I'm excited to chat with you. So probably best place to start. Give us a little bit of an introduction to yourself, um, your current role, company, anything you want to share. Great. Yeah. Um, So it's probably worth noting that I did not start off in a recruiting background. Um, I actually graduated from the Boston Conservatory with a master's in bulk performance back in 2008. Um, And then I was I was actually going on a lot of auditions and um, was not finding a ton of um, a ton of kind of you know, uh, having auditions being very lucrative and kind of financially lucrative, really. Um, So I had actually um, worked, uh, started working at a recruiting agency called JobSpring Partners. um, And that's kind of how I kind of cut my teeth was on the agency side. Um, I was working with various tech companies here in Boston, uh, mostly placing um, systems administrators and network engineers. um, And I did that for a little while and then hopped over to another agency um, to place people on contracted and temporary uh, roles as well. Um, I had so much repeatable business uh, and I, I really liked that kind of opportunity to foster relationships and really kind of focus on one company. So that's when I made the switch to an in-house corporate recruiting role. Um, started working over at Fixu, which was this mobile marketing company. Um, I actually joined them when they were about 150 people and grew them to over 300 in the first two years. Uh, it was amazing and crazy all at the same time. <laughs> um, that first year, I was doing most recruiting um, on my own, uh, and then um, that rapid growth kind of warranted us to bring on another member of the recruiting team. Um, I recruited basically everything on the company side, uh, from you know sales to finance to engineering, um, and also uh, learned how to really work on a lean recruiting budget over at Fixu. Um, then I did um, a small uh, a small session at um, this company called Log Entries uh, before they got acquired. <laughs> Uh, by Rapid7. And then after Rapid7 joined a very small startup called True Motion. Um, They were actually a team of 20 uh, and they wanted to really start, um, you know, rapidly growing. So in that first year, I grew them from 20 to 40 people. um, And we moved out of the um, Harvard Launch Lab into an actual space in Chinatown. So that was um, my first kind of real, you know, I guess, kind of grassroots um, startup. Uh, and now I'm, now I'm over at Level Up. Um, just, uh, you know, being able to uh, grow their team. Um, I actually started with them at about 150, and now we're about 216. Um, it's really been a great experience kind of helping the company scale, improve efficiencies in their interview process, and just try and scale, you know, faster and smarter. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. I love a lot of the things you're saying. I love the idea of running a lean recruiting operation because you really have to maximize every tool and every strategy and really every channel um, to produce good recruiting results. I think it's awesome that you've recruited for so many fast growing startup companies. I mean, like you said, growing from 150 to 300 people, like not many people get that experience to work at a company and and handle talent for a company where you're literally doubling the company size in a short period of time. So I'm sure you've taken away a lot of learnings from there, but I'm interested. So you start on the agency side job spring, Robert Half, and then you moved on to the corporate side. So what was that transition like? What were some of the learnings, you know, from your staffing experience that you took with you to the corporate side? 
Yeah. Well, I think, you know, starting off on the agency side is really valuable, um, especially if you're going to go to a company that is scaling or growing quickly, which I feel like so many startups in Boston are now, you know, in that kind of rapid scaling, kind of rapid growth phase. Um, really at an agency, I learned how to get comfortable working with high volume recs and managing multiple hiring managers with various competing personality or uh, competing priorities, not personality, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> Too. Um, <laughs> Uh, and kind of getting exposure to, to working in kind of that fast paced environment um, where, you know, things change a lot. Um, I think I developed kind of this hustle mentality um, that I just kind of kept as I went in house uh, because you, you think that things might slow down when you go in house, but nope, they move just as quickly, um, especially if you're at a high growth uh, startup kind of like level up is. Um, I think kind of getting that foundation at the agency um, also helps um, um, if that agency has kind of high recruiting stand, uh, kind of standards and also, you know, if they have a solid training program, which um, both um, JobSpring Partners and Robert Half, um, the agencies I, I was at, you know, they had a really solid um, technical training program and just kind of solid recruiting training program. That's awesome. Nice. So let's talk about current company level up. So <laughs> if I were a candidate, because I'm assuming that's most of the people that you're talking to on a yeah. daily basis, if I were a candidate, how would you explain to me what you guys do? So I'd probably just start off first by saying I joined Level Up because it was disrupting the market and in high growth mode. So what Level Up does is we empower restaurants to capture and engage uh, both existing and new customers everywhere. So that's where they live, they work, they play. We provide a seamless digital ordering slash payment uh, and uh, loyalty experience for these consumers. Um, Level Up is extremely employee focused and I'm really proud actually to work with such an inclusive and collaborative group of people. That's what it seems like. I was checking out your guys' careers page, a lot of the content you're putting out. It seems like yeah. a really good, diverse, fun group to be a part of. So that's that's really cool that you're a part of building that. So you said about 216 people now. What's the breakdown of you know engineering, support, sales? What does that look like? Yeah. I would say we have a really strong focus on um, engineering and support. Um, mm -hmm. If I had to give you complete formal numbers. On the engineering side, we have about 89 people. This includes kind of software engineers, mobile developers, and product managers. On the support side, we have around 56 um, support professionals, which includes both our bilingual um, and our um, English speaking support professionals that are working daytime, overnight, and weekend shifts. And then we have about 27 people that make up our design and marketing team and uh, some sales team uh, people are in there too. And then uh, GNA is about 21 people. And then our account managers and um, kind of strategic partnerships make up about 20, 23 people. So if I did my math right, I think that is around 216 people. Um, <laughs> you really, yeah, yeah, that sounded pretty exact. <laughs> Sounds good to yeah. me. We'll, we'll, we'll call it that. Cool. Um, so recruiting for all these positions and they all span you know, a variety of skill sets. I think you even said something about a bilingual support team. So yeah. how many people are on the talent team? We have a three person uh, recruiting team, pretty lean here at Level Up. Uh, we have a technical recruiter, Pat. He's amazing. He has a great growth story. Uh, he actually started off at Level Up as a sales co-op from more, uh, Northeastern. He did really well in his co-op and my predecessor, Anik, saw a spark within him uh, that he might be a great member of the recruiting team. So when Pat graduated, they reconnected and Pat joined our team as a coordinator. Uh, Pat has actually uh, grown uh, with the team to take on full cycle recruiting. And now he actually is handling most of our technical recruiting. Uh, we also have a very bright co-op, Lauren, on the team. She's handling some of the coordination now in a few other projects. Um, I see that kind of same spark in, uh, in her, and I'm excited to have her continue her growth at Level Up and join uh, full time when she graduates in May. Um, even though I said we're a team of three, um, here at Level Up, it really is kind of an all in this together mentality. So really everyone at Level Up is a member of the recruiting team. Um, a good portion of our hires actually come from referrals. I think we're actually around 30% at this time. 
Nice. So what are the goals this year? Do you guys have like aggressive targets you're trying to hit, a certain number of people you're trying to hire, double staff? What what are what is that? Yeah. Like? So I came on board right after we received fifty million dollars in funding from JP Morgan Chase last May. So this really kind of paved us um, kind of the road for us to hire about fifty new employees before the end of twenty seventeen. So twenty seventeen was really our breakout year. We pretty much doubled the entire company in size. We rolled out a new product called Broadcast and and we also, um, that support team that I talked about, tripled in size that year. Um, so the 2018 kind of hiring for us right now is more going to be about strategic hiring. So um, in the month of January, we actually hired 17 new employees, mostly mobile developers and members of our support team. So now kind of looking forward at the growth for this year, um, you know, things can definitely change from our new partners um, and potential new product developments, but we're not going to probably have as rapid growth this year. I think it'll be a little um, knock on wood slower at this point. Well, it sounds like either way, if, if it was fast, you'd be ready for it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> cool. So I was, I was doing a lot of research. I was uh, scanning your LinkedIn profile in, in heavy detail. Yeah. Um, and it looks like I found, you know, pretty, pretty much several consistent themes across all the companies that you've worked at and, and talent acquisition strategies that you've been involved with. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, but these seem to be big things to you. You know, you just using modern software and tools. I, I see you guys, it looks like you're using Lever right mm -hmm. now at Level Up as, as your ATS. Um, employee branding, candidate experience, company culture, career growth. These all seem to be like the big focus points for you is that is that fair to say yeah totally fair to say uh -huh. i mean I think that, you know, building a successful recruiting function, you need a mix of kind of operational and strategic strategies. So having a software that actually elevates the recruiting and interview process is definitely key. It, I mean, it comes down to like, if hiring managers are not enjoying the recruiting software, then it's going to be very, uh, a lot harder for them to put in their feedback, which then that slows down the entire process. You don't know if you're going to move the candidate on to next steps or you're, you know, constantly emailing back and forth with the hiring manager, um, which might actually slow down your process completely and you might even lose a candidate that way um, and then on the candidate side you need to build out this employer brand that excites candidates entices them to answer your email or your LinkedIn message um, and this also just starts um, you know it kind of starts initially with just having a positive company culture and I really believe this this positive company culture is really shaped by the employees for sure that's awesome so I guess let's let's go through some of those some of these points rapid fire here a little mm -hmm. bit we'll, we'll dive into each one and hit on them because I think it's I think it's unique I don't think I think definitely when I was looking at your experience like it's very unique that you've been able to bring all these things together and just come up with like a really cohesive recruitment strategy mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of companies that do you know one of these things or some of these things or they do all of them but they don't really do it that well it seemed like you guys really have your ducks in a row so it was pretty cool to see so I want to touch on each thing very quickly um, so as, as we're talking about modern tools, I know we talk about lever as, as your ATS. Um, and you mentioned that it's obviously really important if your recruiters and your hiring managers don't like the software that you're using, they're probably not going to use it very much or use it very effectively. Mm -hmm. So, um, obviously that has a big impact on the results that you're seeing. So for the people that are listening, for people that are in talent acquisition and they're thinking about trying new tools or new solutions, like what can you say to them that will help them get out of their comfort zone? Because a lot of times people are just satisfied with the status quo and they don't want to try something new. So what would you say to people um, to get them to take that next step? Yeah, I would probably, you know, even take a step back. So it doesn't have to be kind of the newest or the hottest tool out there. I mean, I have sure. some tools that I've used, you know, LinkedIn is it a tool that has been around for a long time. It's tried and true. Um, I've also used Stack Overflow that I've also been using for years. Um, so it doesn't have to be kind of the, the hottest or newest tool out there, but it needs to work for your team. So you really have to look um, internally and kind of ask your, yourself the question like, what um, what is this tool going to do for my team? And is that actually going to impact my team's productivity? Um, that's a big thing to talk about first. And I mean, some of the newer tools out there, they may be great, but also some of them are just repackaging of kind of the same ineffective tools from before uh, that I use, but just have a, maybe a better UI potentially or, or better, you know, X. Um, so you really do have to think about, you know, is this going to make my team more effective? And if it isn't, then move on to something else or explore something else further. Um, I also think, you know, sometimes getting um, 
kind of getting sandboxes from uh, vendors is important well, uh, as well so that you can kind of use the tool and see if it's going to work for you. Um, there have been tools that I've signed up for on contract before and I've gotten into using them and for some reason or another, my brain just does not work the way the tool wants it to work, you know? So, so being able to actually, you know, try out the tool first and make sure that my, you know, my brain is going to understand what's going on with the tool and it's going to work. Um, that's really important as well. Nice. And so as you guys are thinking about the tools that you're using in your recruitment strategy, are you like meeting as a team and coming up with you know, goals or things or metrics that you want to improve on and then trying to identify certain tools that you'll want to look into in the future? Like, are you planning ahead, you know, let's say 90 days from now, you know, we're hoping to have looked into, you know, tools X, Y, and Z, or, or what does that planning process look like for you guys? Yeah, we're definitely thinking about the tools that we want to use and, and actually trying to think as strategically as possible on what's going to help us. Um, so trying out um, anything that's going to maybe streamline our interview process or potentially even our sourcing process. Um, I talk to a good amount of vendors, um, you know, at least at least one vendor a week now um, where they will do a demo with me on their product. And uh, I have kind of a, a running list of all of these softwares and um I'm kind of seeing if that if that solution is actually going to solve um, a problem that I have right now, or um, as you mentioned, you know, kind of alluding to it, but is it going to solve a problem in the future? Um, that I feel like that happens. Um, it regularly occurs at this point. Right on. Let's jump into employer branding. Obviously, this is a big focus for you guys, and definitely a strong point. I mean, number one, best place to work. <laughs> it's not a bad honor yeah. to to receive, um, but that definitely doesn't come without you know, strategic efforts being put towards, you know, achieving that type of goal, right? I mean, it's not just something that happens. You guys definitely have a big focus on it. So what are you guys doing right now to showcase your employer brand mm -hmm. to, um, you know, to tell the story of your employees? Like, what are you guys doing? Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly think it is a team effort. Like, I don't think one person creates the, the employer brand or the employ, um, employ, employer brand. Um, you know, we're using our entire team to really help us define our brand. Um, it's just the people that are working on the product really shape it. Um, getting kind of an understanding of what they do and why they joined Level Up is important to help us actually create a story. Um, what makes them stay at Level Up and the things that they've learned while working here. Um, I feel like kind of that ignites kind of these talking points for me when I'm talking with candidates on my phone screens or when we talk with people on site, um, I can talk about these individual employee stories and that helps the candidate to kind of personally engage with members of our team. Um, even if it is not a candidate that is interviewing for um, a specific role that this other person has been on, but showing and, and talking about kind of the growth path um, that employees have had here, um, that just kind of I guess, alludes to the, um, the employee first nature that level up has. Sure. Sure. And you guys do a really good job though, of like, not just building that, but showcasing it. So just in like, in my communication with you, I saw in your email signature, you've got a link to your glass door profile. You've got a link to an article about you guys being the best place to work. So it's something that you're strategically inserting into these touch points with your candidates. I'm on your careers page. I see, quotes from an employee testimonials from people that work there. So it seems like you guys have a really well thought out um, approach to making sure that not only do you have an, a good employer brand, but you're showcasing it and you're telling that story and you're getting that content in front of candidates. Yeah. I mean, we get out the information just to, uh, to the candidate marketplace pretty much uh, trying to leverage any publication we can. So like we work with Venture Fizz, we work with Built in Boston. Um, we post things on our, our Level Up blog. Um, another thing that we implemented uh, recently um, or recently about two two months ago at this point, um, we did an office tour video. And so we have put that into our phone screen. So anybody who gets a phone screen invite will also get a link that says to help yourself familiarize uh, or to familiarize yourself with Level Up, take a look at our office tour. And it goes through our entire office. It talks about all of our employee perks. You get to meet some of the people in the office and hear from them why they joined the company. So it's just another way for us to kind of highlight, um, highlight our kind of culture to, uh, to potential employees. We just did something like super similar. We, we had some sales candidates that were interviewing that aren't local. So we wanted to give them like a, 
a tour of the office. So we had a sales manager do like a selfie style. It probably, probably didn't seem as professional as the one it sounds like you guys have, but we did like a selfie style tour, just um, showing the different floors of the office and different spaces. And I think it, it goes a long way. I mean, it really gives candidates because they've never stepped foot in your office. So it kind of gives them an idea of like the type of people that work there. What are people dressed like? What are they doing? What's the energy like? What does the office look like? So it's, it's a good behind the scenes um, differentiator, I guess, right? Like, I mean, your candidates are talking to other companies too. So those are the types of things that definitely set you guys apart. Yeah. Um, so that's awesome. You guys are, are so ahead of the curve there. So <laughs> let's talk about um, candidate experience. Is there anything you guys are doing strategically to focus on the candidate experience, like making the whole hiring process better for the people that are, are trying to work at Level Up? So I think candidate experience is really important. You know, each time somebody interacts with uh, our company, it's important. So I think that kind of going in with that mentality that we treat every, um, how we treat every candidate um, over uh, kind of impacts the kind of overall experience of Level Up. Um, so even if kind of having the mentality of like, even if they're not the right fit for this position that they're interviewing for right now, they may be a fit for the future or they might know somebody that knows um, that, that knows somebody um, that might be a good fit. So I feel like um, making sure every candidate has a great experience at level up has been really important. So we try and train our managers on that. Um, we're going to be rolling out um, a, a later on um, this probably next quarter at this point, um, a candidate uh, survey, so we can actually just improve our process. Um, but we also um, have started to build in kind of this baseline for interviewers. So not just asking um, the candidates what they've done um, in each of their roles, but focusing on specific traits um, that the hiring manager thinks would be, you know, a good um, attribute for the person coming into this role. Um, and, and having kind of those focused interviews um, to be kind of specific to kind of one or two traits, I would say that's also improved our candidate experience. And I feel like it makes it more enjoyable for the interviewer and for the candidate because they're not asked the same question, you know, five, during five, five interviews, you know? Yeah, for sure. And I think subtly mm -hmm. having a good candidate experience is also a recruiting advantage. So not only are they having a good experience that are going through your hiring process, but it just says a lot about your organization, like that you put thought in these types of things. And that's like the type of company that I think any candidate would want to work at. So um, while, yes, in the moment, it's creating a great experience and the mm -hmm. candidate will tell their friends about how amazing the hiring process was and how seamless it was and how organized it was, you know, subtly, it's making them really want to work for your organization because they had such a good experience and a good impression yeah. of your company because you guys are the front lines. Um, you're essentially the face of the company. So it's, it's really important. So um, company culture, obviously, that's something that, you're you're putting in your employer branding you're you're showcasing on the website i think it's really easy obviously for everybody to say we have a great company culture um, in their job ads and everything and talk about how awesome it is to work there but it's another thing you know to see that happen in real life so what are you guys doing what are this and some of the initiatives maybe the outings or what are you guys doing as a team to really foster just that like family type of environment yeah. So we have um, an organization within Level Up called the Fun Rangers. And okay. That's <laughs> awesome. I love it. Our, our head of HR wanted to call them the Power Rangers. And uh, <laughs> we, the, the, uh, this is before I joined, but, um, but they eventually came to the name Fun Rangers. So um, they meet actually about once a month and they talk about different events that um, they want to put on for the organization. So we have some um, consistent events that happen each month. So we have um, a birthday celebration that happens each month where we'll have various birthday cakes that'll be brought in. Um, we also have um, what we call Nosh and Knowledge, where um, um, different uh, members of our organization will actually get up and present on a specific topic. So one of them um, that's coming up will be on public speaking. Um, another one that'll come up later on in the year will be on a cooking class. Um, and then actually we have a cookie decorating as well. Our, our director of workplace experience will do one on cookie decorating. So it kind of gets, um, you know, gets, gets kind of in the mood for the holidays. So it's usually in either December or November when she'll, she'll do that one. Um, and then, we just have other specific, you know, every every year we have a summer outing where we'll go um, to, you know, so either either a destination. So we'll go to um, this last year we went to Lawn on D and just did outside uh, games. Um, before that, we've actually gone on a boat cruise before. Uh, and then uh, during um, December or January, we'll have a holiday party where everybody uh, and their significant others are invited to attend and just 
you know, eat some delicious food, um, maybe take some crazy pictures, uh, and, and just kind of get to, to hang out with each other and kind of close out, uh, close out or even open up the year. Um, so we have different events that are kind of placed throughout the year to keep employees, um, you know, excited, but also, um, it gives them the opportunity to kind of engage with people that maybe they don't get to interact with on a, you know, daily basis. Um, we also have, uh, trivia nights that are kind of scattered throughout the year as well. Um, where, you know, employees can be on different teams. Um, you're not, you're not placed on a team. It's really organic. Uh, and you get to actually, you know, know more of the people that you work with, um, by just kind of talking with them and, and working together to do, to solve these trivia problems. That's awesome. It sounds like, it sounds like a lot of fun. So would you say as far as like building a really good company culture, do you think like the outings and the team events are really what pulls everything together? Because obviously there's like a lot of stuff on the day to day, the different perks and, you know, obviously what the actual work environment is like, but do you feel like the strongest contributor to a, to a good company culture is just bringing everybody together for these non-work related outings or events? I think they all play a part to be honest. You know, I mean, I think that the, the events definitely become a catalyst for people to be, to get to know each other in maybe more of a comfortable setting and actually, you know, get to know each other as humans (laughs) instead of, you know, this is my coworker that I need X from. Um, You actually get to know, you know, oh, this is my coworker and they own like five corgis. Um, (laughs) It's, it's, it's fun to, to get to know um, people um, as people instead of people as um, that project manager or, you know, the software engineer, you know, we're not, we're not defined just by, um, the job that we do. Um, that also leads to um, talking a little bit more about our devol- our diverse kind of background of people here. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, I have a degree um, in vocal performance and opera. Um, we actually have people that come from uh, being circus performers. Um, we have people that are part of the fire throwing community here in Boston. Um, we have uh, people that are um, involved in uh, in in various I mean, like in various other organizations as well throughout the company. So it's it's cool to actually get to to know other people and and what they do like their their side hustle pretty much. Yeah, no, I think everything you're saying makes total sense. Like it's really important to get to know people like outside of actually what they do. But like along those same lines, it's. I think it's really easy, like for a company, you've got all these different teams, you've got engineering, you've got sales, you've got support, everybody's kind of like siloed, right? Because they're all doing their work. They collaborate with each other throughout the day, but they don't really know like exactly what this developer does versus this other developer, or what this salesperson does versus this account manager. So I think some of those, those events are outside of work, but even stuff that you can do in the office to like bring everybody together and have these different teams mingle with each other is really important because that's where like people really get to see like what others are actually doing within the organization and how their role on a specific team might be different from another person's role. So I think that's, that's definitely a big, um, a big aspect of company culture is getting to know those things as well. Definitely. And another thing that we do just to kind of have transparency is every single month we actually have a department or a company wide um, lunch uh, where we actually talk about um, each department actually gets up and talks about the projects that they're working on right now. Um, It's a quick kind of like one to two minute kind of hit the highlights of what your what your what your department is doing. Um, But it's also just a kind of um, it's interesting to get to know what every department is doing and, and kind of their their successes and, you know, share and celebrate in their successes of what they accomplished over that last month. For sure. For sure. All right. Well, this brings me to career growth. I know I said I was going to circle back to it. So it's definitely <laughs> yes. one of the things I wanted to get back to because I know it's it's obviously really important to you. It was one mm-hmm. of the stories you brought up um, earlier in the conversation, and it pops up a ton on your LinkedIn profile, just how you're trying to foster growth for employees at all these different companies that you've worked at. So is this something that, you know, obviously you have a strong focus on it within the organization, but is this something that's like a key um, part of your recruiting strategy? Like as you're talking to candidates, you're talking about how they can grow and, and where you guys can see them moving up within the organization? Yeah, I I definitely think it is a key focus of mine. So 
I kind of take a matchmaker approach uh, to recruiting. Um, I know that candidates are interviewing me just as, and members of our team just as much as they're in, uh, at the, as we're interviewing them, um, especially with this market. Um, you know, candidates can be pretty picky with the roles that they want. So you, you really want to ensure that, you know, they're going to find the right role for them that is truly fulfilling. Um, so, I actually ask a specific question um, to most most candidates, and I say, you know, when you're vetting out companies, what is the most important thing to you um, when you're vetting out either a new company or a new position? And I like this question because you really get to know the candidate and understand what motivates them and what's going to drive them to, to take a new role. Um, you might learn a little bit more about their you know, career path or career progression that they want to have, or you might learn that maybe they don't know what it is yet. And that kind of that leads into kind of the, the consulting side of recruiting where, you know, you might help them find their way. And um, and I, w- I want to make sure that candidates um, if they if they choose to come work at Level Up, you know they have a, a successful time here and feel um, or always feel uh, fulfilled uh, working here. Um, but then, in addition, you know if if there isn't a role right now for them here, we're a startup. We grow and lots of new positions come available. So um, I want to keep uh, I want to keep them in mind for for future opportunities as well. So I, I definitely like to talk about career growth internally and how how we've seen it fostered internally. But I also want to know, you know, what the candidate wants for career growth, because I feel like each each person I talk to has a different um, kind of key point in mind about what they or how they view career growth. All right, so I hope everybody wrote down what is the most important thing to you as an interview question to ask because I'm definitely <laughs> stealing that and asking that in all future interviews because I love it. Um, it's one awesome. Of my favorite questions. Yeah, I perfect. really, really like it. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks so much. That's, that's awesome. So I guess, you know, as far as for the people listening, right, they're listening for a reason. They want to learn something. I, I know there's a ton of stuff that they've been able to take away, but is there mm-hmm. anything like, the thing that I hear as I'm listening to you talk is like, you've just done a really good job at putting programs um, and strategies in place and making sure they stick. Like, it sounds like you guys just have a really well-balanced recruitment strategy. Um, It's really well-structured. You know what your goals are moving forward. You know, the things that you want to try out and then, you know, to make sure, you know how to make sure that um, people stay accountable for, you know, keeping these programs and these different initiatives in place. So Mm -hmm. for people that are like, trying and are very ambitious to build out a recruitment strategy like the one you guys have at level up like what advice can you give them like how can they emulate some of the things that you guys have been doing at their own organization and making sure that it sticks yeah i think that the first thing that you have to do is build trust um so one thing that i i actually came in with and was very 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 fortunate is um everyone within the organization has this level of kind of trust and also kind of this level of involvement in recruiting so um recruiting for level up is really a team sport you know everybody everybody here is a recruiter and uh, and i think that comes down to kind of building that that first kind of baseline of trust um so understanding what each member of uh, each hiring man- manager is actually looking for and being able to um, communicate with them, keep them updated, um, m- making sure they're never, they never feel like they're in the dark. Um, that's really important. Um, and then as far as kind of an overall recruiting strategy, I definitely think that, you know, we do, um, we do use data a good bit to kind of inform our decisions. So, um, we don't kind of set hard, you know, hard numbers as far as like, I have to, I have to hit this many calls per week, but we are cognizant of, you know, how many calls will translate um, to on-sites and how many on-sites will translate to offers and offers to hires. Um, So you definitely want to be, you know, aware of those kind of metrics, but you also want to make sure that you're communicating those uh, metrics to hiring managers as well. That's awesome. Yeah. And if you know, if you know those metrics, right, your recruiting process becomes somewhat predictable, right? Like, you know, with certain inputs, you're going to get certain outputs. And then if there's new strategies that you implement and you can increase and improve and optimize 
um, some of those results, your, your strategy is still repeatable and it's predictable, um, but now it's just yielding better results. Um, yeah. So you just got to change some of those inputs and, and you have more of the output. So that's awesome. So um, let's run through. I've got five questions to ask you about some of your favorite things. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. So favorite place to find candidates. Oh, um, that is a tough one, actually. There's a lot of sources out there, <laughs> but you got to pick one. Um, see, it's funny you say that because I would probably say favorite place to get candidates from is our employees. Um, ah, our, I love you it. Know, our, our, <laughs> um, you know, our referrals are great. Um, right now we're about 30% um, on referrals and we might, uh, we might bump it up a little bit this year. Um, when I was at Fixu, we actually got it up to like 65%. It was kind of, kind of crazy. Um, I, I think that that is a phenomenal resource. You know, your employees networks are, are really huge. If I had to pick a software that would be really, or like a, a tool where I'm having to leverage it, that would be difficult because I, I, I mentioned Stack Overflow and I mentioned LinkedIn a little earlier. Um, and those are great resources, but if I was being completely honest, like I think my employees are my biggest resource and biggest champions. Yeah, that's a, that's a great answer. And probably leads to like your best long-term hires, right? Like I'm sure you're getting obviously great people from those other sources too, but there's nothing like an employee referral. So that's awesome. Great answer. What about favorite part of your job? Oh, um, so every day is so different. <laughs> um, I feel like I talk to um, a lot of uh, candidates with different backgrounds and different personalities and I never have the same call. Uh, so I, I like that kind of um, kind of unpredictability, I guess. Cool. Favorite sports team? Oh, um, Boston Red Sox. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nice. I was, I was thinking I was going to guess Patriots and then I was oh, going to say, I'm sorry that they just lost the Super Bowl. No, but... I, 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 I appreciate the Patriots, but I'm not, ma I'm not a major football fan actually. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, favorite hobby. <laughs> Uh, favorite hobby. Uh, so favorite hobby is sewing. Um, for the past few years, I have made my Halloween costume for myself, my husband, and uh, our now three-year-old. Wow. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. Now, this is, this is the tough question because there's so many options. What is your favorite TV show to binge on Netflix? Oh, okay. Um, this is so tough because I have kind of two – Two ways I would go about this. So I, I love New Girl. Okay. Uh, it, it is great to um, – just great comic television to watch <laughs> over and over again. Um, but I have a, a, a place in my heart for Grey's Anatomy okay. that I can fall asleep to watching Grey's Anatomy at this point. And I know exactly where I left off in the episode. I've watched it way too many times. It's my guilty pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Right on. Awesome. Well, those are some great answers. This was an awesome <laughs> podcasting conversation. I think everybody that listens to it is going to learn a ton. I think mm -hmm. you should look into doing some speaking at some conferences. I feel like there are a lot of events out there that can get a lot of value from what you have to say. So um, that's a good takeaway for you to look into. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. So if people want to connect with you, where can they find you? What's the best place for them to reach out? Yeah, so they can um, they can look me up on LinkedIn. Um, they can actually uh, find me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is married to IT. Um, and they can also just email me as well. I'm at Jen at the Level Up. Great. And if people are interested in a career at Level Up, where should they go? Uh, so they should go to uh, the Level Up Careers page. Perfect. Anything else you'd like to add before we sign off? Um, for anybody who is interested in getting into recruiting, I think, you know, if you have a fascination or a passion uh, for people and customer service, that this is a great line of work. Um, it is extremely fulfilling um, when you actually find somebody their their job and it, it makes me happy. <laughs> great. Jen, this was amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Hope everyone enjoyed it, and thanks. Have a great day. We hope you found this episode impactful and would like to invite you to discover even more resources on our website at sparkhire.com slash resources. Our library of HDR and recruiting content, complete with webinars, ebooks, courses, and our popular video series, The Recruiting Reel, will have you ready to take on any recruiting challenge. You can find all this and more at sparkhire.com slash resources. Until next time, keep retention high and growth happening.